Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So this is going to be part two of the intro to organic chemistry basics. If you haven't seen part one, it's on my channel. So let's just dive right in. So a little bit of a recap from the last time, from the last video I showed you guys. Uh, we said that prefixes are essentially how we write the beginning of a name of an organic molecule. And we have prefixes here from 1 to 10. If you're learning the basics, this is probably as far as you'll go, up to 10. And these prefixes tell us how many carbons are in a molecule. So let's take this one for example. 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 4 carbons in this molecule, so that gives us the prefix of but. And if you saw my last video, you'll know that this is called butane. And I'll explain why uh, in a bit. But yeah, essentially the beginning of a name is determined by the prefix. And the second part of the name is essentially determined by the type of bond that you have. So do we have an alkane, single bonded carbon carbon, alkene, double bonded carbon carbon, or alkyne, triple bonded carbon carbon bond here. And this will tell us sort of the second half of the name. So here, let's look at this alkane right here. So we have a three carbon molecule. So if we think back to our prefixes, three is prop. So you should remember those prefixes. You should memorize those and know them in and out. So three carbons is prop. And because this single bonded, because this is a single bonded molecule, an alkane, it's going to have the ane suffix. So the second part of the name is going to be called ane. So it's going to be propane. That's what this is going to be called. This one is uh, two carbons, so that is meth eth. So this is eth, because there's two. And it is an alkene, so this is going to be ethene, because of that bonding there. Let's look at this one. This is also, number one is meth, number two carbons is eth, and this is an alkyne, so this is ethine. And that's how you name, at the very, the very basic level, this is how you would name these molecules. Okay, so a little bit of a side note. I just want to let everyone know what a saturated versus unsaturated bond means in organic chemistry. So essentially, let's start with this example here, this propane that I showed you. Essentially, a saturated bond just means that our carbon is occupied by completely single bonds in this molecule. So all of our carbons here have single bonds to each other. Everything here is single bonded, right? We don't have double bonds or triple bonds here between these carbons. This backbone is fully saturated. Each carbon is fully occupying its four bonds singly, as we can see. As opposed to this compound right here, this molecule, this ethene that we have, this is called an unsaturated bond because there is a double bond. If this was a triple bond, it is also called unsaturated. So basically, think of the word saturation, which means to, to be full, right? The four bonds here are all full, and they're all occupied singly by something, as opposed to here. This is one single bond, one single bond, but then we have a double bond. So they're, they're kind of two bonds put together as one, occupying the same space, bound to the same uh, element, another carbon. So this isn't fully saturated, this is unsaturated. And like I said, if this was triple bonded, that is also called unsaturated. So I also want to show you guys that essentially um, organic molecules can also be written this way. And we can see here CH3, CH2, CH3. So what does that mean? Well, if we were to draw this out, you have to read it left to right. And you just start to draw each carbon, and this H tells you how many hydrogens are attached to this corresponding carbon. So you would draw a carbon with three H's, then a carbon with two H's, right here, carbon with two H's, and then a carbon with another three H's. So then you have your carbon with another three hydrogens. So this propane, this is how it's written out here. Another way I wanted to show you that you can write it is you can swap the C and the H, and instead of writing it as CH3, CH2, CH3 here, you can write it as H3C, CH2, CH3. And this could be more intuitive for some people because technically if you were to look at the molecule here, you see that it kind of 
starts with hydrogens and then we read the carbons and then we also read the hydrogens. So this is kind of a way to write it. Hydrogens attached to the carbon, three hydrogens to the carbon, and then CH2, CH3. So it could be written either or. This is more conventional, but you might also see this way. So you don't want to get tripped up on a test if you see it written this way. It's the same thing as this. They're interchangeable. Okay, so now I wanted to talk about brackets in naming. So here we have a organic molecule, CH3, CH, brackets, CH3, and then a CH3 on the end. So let's start to draw it. I hope you're starting to draw it as you watch this video, and I'm sure you're probably getting stuck at this part right here. So this is what it would look like. So we would start by drawing out the CH3. So we have CH3. Then we add a C that has an H on it. C has an H on it. And in brackets, it's telling us that we have another CH3 attached to this carbon. So we have another methyl, a single carbon. This methyl group, this CH3, is attached to that second carbon right here. So we have first carbon, second carbon, on that second carbon, in brackets, we have this methyl group attached. And then we have a third carbon that has three hydrogens. So this is our third carbon here that has three hydrogens in the backbone. Okay, so essentially in this case, our bracket is basically telling us that we have a group that is branching on to the backbone. As we can see here, we have a little bit of a branching thing going on. So here's another example. We have CH3, CH2, subscript to CH3. So how would we draw this? So we start out with the first carbon here, C, that has three hydrogens. One, two, three. So we draw it out. Then here what we see is, in brackets, there's just CH2 and there's two of them. So this subscript 2 is telling us that there's two of whatever is in here. So there's two CH2s. So we have the CH3 that we drew, then you add another CH2, and another CH2, because of this, told us we have two CH2s, which is right here. And then we have our final CH3 on the end, CH3, as you can see. So here, the bracket can tell us two different things. Brackets can tell us that we're branching off of the, of the backbone here, because it's telling us See, this methyl group is on this carbon, versus here, there is no carbon coming before the way it is here. Here, it just says we have two of these guys right here. So that's essentially two ways of interpreting brackets when we name organic molecules. Okay, so I want us to do some practice. Um, we're going to take what we learned from this video and we're going to also take what we learned from the last video and try to do some problems. Um, if you are still unsure, you can rewatch that video, rewatch this video and try these again. So we have a, a line structure here. So you might not have seen this. So I'll go through this one with you and then we can continue on from there. So here, essentially what you want to do is you want to start from the very beginning and you're going to count this as carbon one. Then you're going to count this as carbon 2, 3, 4, and 5. So each, essentially, point counts as a carbon. So we have 1 bonded to 2, bonded to 3, bonded to 4, bonded to 5 carbons. So how would we name this? We have 5 carbons, and this is technically a single bond. There's no double bond that is added here. So this is 5 singly bound carbons. So what is this called? This is called if it'll load, pentane. So that's what that is. This is pentane. So now is our next example here. So we have one, two, three, four carbons, right? But we can see here there is a double bond. So do we count it this way? One, two, three, four. Or do we count it this way? One, two, three, four. Well, what I will tell you is you want to count carbons such that whatever you have attached becomes, uh, when you name it, it ends up on the lowest numbered carbon, okay? So if you have a double bond, you want this double bond to be on the lowest number carbon as you can get it to be. So in this case, 
we can count it as this way, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. Because this is a four carbon molecule, it's technically symmetrical, right? It, you can either count it this way, one, two, or one, two. Either way, this double bond lands on the second carbon. So in this case, it doesn't matter uh, because it's still gonna be on carbon two, no matter which direction you count from, right? It, let's say this double bond was actually here. It was at the beginning. Well, you want to count it as one, two, three, four, because that double bond would be on the first carbon when you count this way. If that, if this double bond was moved here and you counted it this way, one, two, three, four, and you said, oh, the double bond's on the fourth carbon or the third carbon, that would be wrong. It has to be on the lowest numbered carbon. So in this case, it's on the second carbon. And so here we have a double bond, which tells us it's not an alkane, it's an alkene. So we have to keep that in mind when we're naming it. So how many carbons do we have? One, two, three, four. So we have four carbons. And what's the prefix for four? It's going to be but, okay? So it's butene, butene, because it is a alkene. But the alkene, the double bond, is on carbon number two. So what do we call it? We call it 2-butene, or you can say but-2-ene. These are interchangeable. You can write it either way. It's correct both ways. You might see it more often as this way, though. It's more conventional written this way. Okay, let's do another example. So let's count how many carbons we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Okay, you can also count it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we still have six. Um, so we can see that we have some big backbone that we have here. And then we have essentially another carbon on its own here, right? So how do we number this carbon? Well, like I said, we want to number any type of addition to this backbone, this main backbone, whether it's a carbon or a bond or whatever you, whatever you want, you want to give it the lowest number possible. Always remember that. So we have to count from this way. We have to go one, two, three, four, five, six. That way this extra uh, methyl group, this extra carbon, CH3, is attached at the second carbon on this backbone. I hope that makes sense, because if we count it this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, this will end up being on carbon five, which is incorrect. It must be on one, two, carbon two. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We said we have six carbons. So what's the prefix for six? It's going to be hex. We notice that there is no double bond, no triple bond. It's single bonded. It's an alkane, so it's hexane but we have an attachment here. We have a carbon uh, attachment. It's one single carbon, right? It's just a methyl group, just carbon one. So we're gonna call this carbon one, two, it's on the car second carbon, two methyl hexane, because the backbone is a hexane. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's have you guys write this one out or draw this one out if you can. So this is 4-ethyl, 3-methyl heptane. So let's go through it together. Start with the backbone here. It says heptane, okay? Hept means seven. So we're going to have seven carbons, right? Ane means they're all singly bound. There's no double bonds and no triple bonds. So we're going to draw that out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, sorry, I accidentally drew eight. Um, just ignore this one. So it's going to be seven. You just want to count seven points. And then ane, because it's singly bound to each other, the carbons. So now it's 4-ethyl-3-methyl. That means on carbon 4, we have an ethyl group. Ethyl, eth means two. And 3-methyl, meth means one carbon, remember? So we're going to add on our third carbon, one, two, three, the methyl group. And on our fourth carbon, one, two, three, four, we're going to add that ethyl right there. So this would be four ethyl, three methyl heptane. Uh, technically, if you just get rid of this one line, it should be, should be seven. I accidentally drew eight there. Okay, so let's do this one. 
2,4-diethyl octane. Okay, so let's start again from here. Oct means eight, so we have to have eight carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. Octane, ain, means they're all singly bound. There's no double bond, no triple bond. Okay, great. So it's saying we have two, four, diethyl. So di means two. We have two of something. What do we have two of? We have two ethyl groups. Ethyl, if you remember the prefixes, ethyl, eth means two carbons, right? So we're going to have two, two carbon groups attached at which number? Carbon number two and carbon number four. That sounds a bit uh, confusing, right? So I'm just going to show you. We're going to number them off and then I'll show you where we add it. So we drew octane and we said at carbon number two and carbon number four, we're going to have ethyl groups and there should be two of them because it's on two different carbons. So at carbon number one, carbon number two, we should have an ethyl group, right? One carbon, two carbon. That's our ethyl attachment there, right? So one, two, carbon number three, carbon number four, we should have another ethyl group. So this is diethyl because there's two ethyl groups and ethyl means two carbons. So you just have to really keep track of, of, of all the different, essentially all the different parts of this name when you're, when you're naming these molecules.